Good morning, team. I was just stifling a belch there. I don't know why I had the urge to say team. Team is what we used to use in my former job. It used to be that I worked for the government and we spoke in governmenties and militaries, uh, going on furlough and uh, tours of duty and such. And then maybe 10 ish years ago, we decided to get all warm and fuzzy and call each section, smaller section, team. So good morning and welcome to Team Chester. I have to scratch my nose. Here we go. Yeah, so it's day, I don't know what the fuck day of quarantine. And I had a bunch of strange dreams. Not unusual. It's way too early in the morning. It's not even 7 a.m. here in Zone 12. And the coffee pot isn't going to go off for another hour. But I wanted to get this down. Make a record of it. Just in case. <laughs> ha ha. Just in case we get some uh, copyright infringements or like origin stories. And it's like, well, this, I heard this once on YouTube. So I was having a bunch of dreams as usual, and I do have dreams in which I make mistakes and immediately rectify them. A lot of this has to do with my meat allergy. For example, I'll be dreaming I'm eating a burger or something with bacon on it, and I'll stop and I say, wait, I cannot do that. And then I peel off the bacon and stuff. So in my brain, my sleep brain, I catch myself in time from doing things that would harm me. So in this series of dreams, I had something involving a cheeseburger or a, a bacon grilled cheese. And then later on I dreamed I was driving some people I know from the radio station to their house. And there was something about a box of tangerines. And my, my car controls had some sort of thing where it showed you either the, the actual scenery or a simulation. And I wanted the simulation turned off so I could... I could better control the car. And then the third part, I was in this sort of team, this kind of conference, this kind of meeting, which had an older gentleman, I gathered foreign as the, the lead or chair, and there were four or five of us. And for some reason, I had either invited myself or been recently invited, although I was not quite qualified. Or it was unusual for a person like myself to be to be in this. And I dreamed that we were sh being shown things and there was this one part where we were in someone's garage or in a, in a large, we were being shown someone's home which had a really large area with a lot of books. And I go, oh, look at the library. And I recognized some of them. The auto manuals that my father used to have, I think they were called Chilton's. They were uh, blue, bindery books telling you how to repair stuff because my father uh, one of his interests had been in mechanics and he had been allegedly uh, a mechanic in the army so in this dream I had been separated or was not with the others and I had a sugar bowl and I stuck my toothbrush in it realizing immediately this was a gaffe that I should not be putting my personal items in other people's communal food and I realized that I had to confess this, that I had put my toothbrush in the sugar bowl. And so we got back to the table or something and I, I was embarrassed and I said to like the servant or the guy in charge of that, I have to talk to Mr. What's his name here, what's his name, and, and tell him I did this. And I did this and I confessed. And then there was like a review and it was up on the screen just like the last judgment there was a review and there was up on the screen of what each person had done or whatever uh, during the conference or things he'd noticed and they did everybody but me and I said wait a minute you did not analyze what I did you did not analyze that I put my toothbrush in the sugar bowl and this was a terrible shameful thing because you know you have to throw out the sugar and you know sugar you know, was a ration thing back in the war. And who knows, someday it could again be a, a valuable commodity. You can't be doing these things. And, and I remember that he didn't really, like, want to put me up there with the others or hadn't thought of it or maybe he wanted to reprimand me in private. But, but he started talking about how intelligent I was and how brave or, or, or forward-thinking I was to even, like, join the group. It was strange, but I said, what a great phrase this is. 
putting your putting your toothbrush in the sugar bowl because isn't that what some people do? They just go and they ruin things for others. And then when I woke up, I thought again, you know, that's a very bad thing for yourself because the last thing you want to do with a toothbrush, which is meant to clean your teeth, and I'm quite a bit fanatic about my teeth because as they get older and I get older, I want to be careful. But what I do to them, I'm careful about, you know, oral hygiene. And so, like, okay, this is a thing that harms me pro at least as much or possibly more than, than, than others. So, like, this is a really interesting phrase. I wonder if a psychologist has or if another culture has used this phrase, but from now on, when I do something that messes me up and also messes others up, I'm gonna use this phrase. Man, I sure put my toothbrush in the sugar bowl that time. And it's been six minutes of explaining this phrase, which I really like, and I'm gonna share this and 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 be using it along with my, my other ridiculous phrases such as, that really steams my cheese and this shit is flavorful. So uh, enjoy your quarantine if that's at all possible. I'm going to uh, wait for my coffee to show up and I have other things to do. So stay safe, stay thoughtful, and uh, write down your dreams and share. Um, I'm sure everybody's having interesting dreams this time of this time of year in this planet. Bye.